everythingsgreen.com hotline. I got a guy who is probably more passionate about gardening than I've ever met in my life. Ty, how you doing? I'm doing awesome. How are you doing, Nick? You know, if I do any better, they're going to have to arrest me, so let's not go there, okay? <laughs> Fantastic. All right. <laughs> now, as the uh, the manager curator over at the Oregon Gardens Horticulture, uh, I mean, Oregon, Oregon Gardens, I got to ask you something. How do you get any work done? How do I get any work done? It, it's a... Uh... I get a lot of work done. I don't necessarily get the work that I'd like to do, which would be up in the garden, you know, or, or uh, you know, doing some of those actual gardening tasks. But um, there's more work to be done up here than we know what to do with. It's uh, there's there's all kinds of things to do, to be honest with you. Well, I know that you guys definitely are looking for volunteers. So anybody that's in that area or would like to just come up for a few days and start ripping some plants out and pulling some weeds, I'm sure you could use their help with that as well, couldn't you? Oh, most definitely, yeah. And if they'd like to, uh, if there is anybody listening up in this area, which I imagine there is, um, if they contact Beth Maurer, who is our volunteer coordinator, ah. she'd be able to get them hooked up. It's very painless, and it, yeah, it's a good experience out here. Now, is Beth the gal that I met? Uh, that would have been Tess. And oh, Tess, Tess is uh, one of our horticulturists uh, that primarily does all of our vegetable growing for us. Ah, okay. All right, well, let's talk, talk, talk about basics over here. Uh, you're in Silverton, Oregon. And you, mm -hmm. when you, what, what's what's that main highway that's in front of the the that goes in front of the place? Uh, that is two thirteen, I believe. Two thirteen. What well, you got to pretty much be, you got to be pretty much be blind if you don't see the sign from the street. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Definitely, yeah. I mean, it practically yeah, it's, it's it's fairly obvious. <laughs> it practically jumps out and smacks you in the head. So you've got yes, this sir. great sign. You come driving in. You're greeted with some buildings on the right hand side. You've got a lot of history to the to the place and such. I don't even know know where to start. I do know that when when you gave me the personal guided tour, and I'm not promising anybody you're going to get that from anybody uh, uh, anybody else like I did over there. But you know, uh, what can I tell you? They know how to take care of me over there. But uh, I, I got to tell you something here, uh, Ty. Very interesting, very fascinating. I want to touch up on a couple of things right now. Uh, uh, number one. Uh, when you come driving up, and then on the left-hand side, you've got all those little pads of water. You've got something really interesting mm -hmm. going on with the water over there. Tell us about that. We do. Um, it, it is the, uh, it, they are the cooling ponds for the uh, wastewater treatment plant here in Silverton. The Oregon Garden, the reason that the Oregon Garden is sitting on the footprint that it is is because uh, the, the wastewater that was twice treated and was uh, acceptable to discharge back into the, uh, back into the stream systems was approximately eight degrees too hot, and the EPA was going to fine the city $10,000 per day <laughs> until they came oh, up no. with a solution. So they ended up uh, coming across this land. They built their series of cooling ponds up here, and uh, the OA at that point was looking for a place to install a botanical garden to showcase, you know, uh, the horticulture prowess of the Willamette Valley, and uh, it just worked out perfectly. And we use all that uh, reclaimed effluent water for our irrigation purposes. And some Super. people, when you tell them that it's the uh, it's it's the back end of the wastewater treatment plant, they get a little weird about <laughs> it, thinking that it's sewer water. But by no means is it. It's it's uh, perfectly clean. It's it's acceptable. I mean, I. I don't know if you'd want to drink it, but it sure makes the plants grow nicely. And it's tea. And if we, uh, 300,000 gallons during the months of uh, July and August is typically our water usage. And if we were uh, wow. if we were paying city water on that, we would go out of business pretty quickly. Wow, that's <laughs> so a It's a really, lot. really interesting and fascinating setup that we here. And, and to our knowledge, we're one of the only botanical gardens that actually irrigates you know, our plants this way with this sort of, you know, with this sort of means having a partnership with a wastewater treatment. Well, plant. you know, it it's kinda, really, really cool. It kind of, it kind of uh, hits on that sustainability factor. You know, you guys yes, are doing sir, something. So. You're doing something that's really cutting edge. Something that other people should probably model themselves after and and see if they couldn't do that in their neck of the woods as well whether it's a large piece of ground uh, that's unusable that could become usable because of something like this. Yeah, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. It, it's a it's a neat thing to be a part of. That's for sure. Well, the other thing I, I like to talk about here, and it's, I mean, there's just a ton of stuff. I, I must have took three thousand pictures when I was there, but awesome. uh, <laughs> but but I got I got I got to tell you something. I got more of a kick out of you when you were in the little conifer area than anything else. I mean, you talk about a kid oh, yeah. in a candy store, and there was no candy to be found except for the eye candy of all of these different types 
of conifers that were out there and the shapes the mm-hmm. sizes the contours the leaves the i, I mean yeah and, and that's without even looking <laughs> you know tell yeah, us a little some, tell us a little about that really amazing stuff in there now what are some of your favorites uh, in the area one of my favorites. Oh my goodness, that's that's hard. Well, I'm uh, I, I've uh, when I was uh, growing professionally, I was uh, doing a lot of Japanese maples, but primarily conifers, and it's always been my area of, uh, of of expertise, if you will, or area of interest. And I'm really, really interested in uh, in any of the sugas or hemlocks. And we have a really, really broad uh, array of, of of hemlocks out there. There's a couple that uh, I really find fascinating. Um, uh, and gosh, I don't know, man. You're you're stumping me now. I mean, there's so many. <laughs> I'm just seeing all these plants. Like, ah, oh, talk to me. We uh, recently uh, we had a we have a partnership with Rare Tree Nursery out here in Silverton, and uh, really good guys out there. And they hooked us up with a Pinus contorta Chief Joseph, and it was about a 35 gallon. And uh, I couldn't even tell you what this tree was valued at, but uh, we recently installed that, and it is it's just amazing. But probably probably my favorite things out there is. Um, one we have a uh, we have a uh, Picea glauca pendula, and if no one is familiar, with, well, I imagine that there's quite a few of your listeners that are familiar with that. But if uh, people want to even just get on the internet and look up Picea glauca pendula, it is one of the most beautiful upright tree forms ever. It's got this real strict apical dominance, followed by super pendulous growth. Those are neat, and then also. You know, we have some Suga mertensianas, or just mountain hemlocks, and uh, the form of those down here in the valley is typically they just don't do that well. But the ones that we have, uh, whoever planted them in the past in the conifer garden did an amazing job because they have beautiful form and great drainage. But there's just, I mean, there's so much. We could talk for hours about the conifer garden, <laughs> but I'd use up all your time. I mean, it's it's truly amazing, and honestly, that that is... It, it's probably one of the most popular gardens, if not the most popular gardens out here, and it definitely draws the it, it draws an international crowd. I've met just specifically in that garden. I've met literally everybody from from you know most every continent. I mean, it, it's it's that's what's fascinating is is there's just a lot of people out there that are interested in conifers, and when you do find them and talk to them, they are crazy passionate about it, and it's a it's a cool place to have conversations. And with the I, I think some of the the neat factors about all this is is that how the plants complement each other without getting too weird and wild i mean this yeah definitely yeah, that's really just fascinating and there are different colors you know sometimes you think of a conifer it's, eh, it's just a plain old green uh-uh i yeah. mean we're talking all shades of every color shape it's just fascinating hey in a little time that we have left you have other gardens that are there you've got you've got the, the kids gardens you've got flower gardens mm-hmm. vegetable gardens um first off when is the best time to come visit the gardens? Oh my goodness! Every time, every, every day is a good time to come out here. Well, I was—I no, the... I would say uh, the 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 majority of people that come out really like to see all the annual color and like to see everything, you know, fully leafed out. And so, typically, if if a person was to come out in mid to late June, I would say that's most likely when the garden's at its peak. That's before we get any signs of drought stress. All the leaves are beautiful. Um, that would most likely be the best time is, is mid to late June, and uh, the garden's just it's it's emotionally beautiful out there. Well, it's just uh, incredible. Well, I tell you, I want to thank you guys for your hospitality to me. I've got a great hotel over there that I had the opportunity to visit, and of course, coming down to the gardens and just getting lost in there, and for the opportunity to meet you as well as get a guided tour, I greatly appreciate it and thank you. Uh, what's the website that they can come visit? The website would be www.oregongarden.org. Very good. Hey, listen, Ty, thanks a lot for being on the program. Look forward to seeing you again, okay? Hey, awesome. It was super cool to meet up with you down here, and, yeah, I uh, hope to see you again sometime soon. All right, just remember, green side up, dude. Got it, got it. All right, hey, take care. (laughs) You too.